Hey guys, I'm Ich, and here's my question. Are you at that stage where you're starting to get requests for mixtapes and hype reels and recruiting videos and you're really excited about it, but you have absolutely no idea how much you should be charging for them? Well, you're in luck because today I'm gonna take you through a process that will help you figure out exactly how much you should be charging for your sport videos. And make sure you stick around till the end because I'm gonna give you a few of my very own negotiation tricks. In my opinion, there are four things you need to consider when deciding how much to charge a potential client. Experience, equipment, expenses, and time. So let's go through each of them individually and then I'll explain how they all fit into a system that I use to charge my clients. Let's start with experience. You're obviously never gonna make as much money when you're just starting than when you're five, 10 years into your career. That's just a fact but the key is to know how and when to start charging more money, which I'll explain a little bit later. Another thing you wanna consider in a similar way is your equipment. You definitely wanna charge your clients for using your camera kit, for example, but the one that you start with is not gonna be worth as much as the one you'll be using five years later. And that's not just a fact, it's also a very serious advice. Because if you allow me to go off topic for a second here, you should only buy equipment that you can afford. Don't buy anything on credit unless it's for a guaranteed job that will pay it all back. Otherwise, if or should I say when you have a couple of dry months with nothing really going on work-wise, those payments are gonna sting. And they're gonna come with a, a bit of a smell, smell of regret. The next thing you need to consider when charging a client is the potential list of expenses that might come with their particular project. For example, will you need to pay someone to help you? Will you need to rent extra equipment like expensive lights or even just buy something as cheap and stupid as chalk? And how far is this job from where you live? Because if it's a long drive, you might want to include traveling expenses. Anyway, my point is that these are all things to consider so that you don't end up spending money while you're supposed to be making money. And finally, the last thing to consider when you're charging a client is your time. More specifically, how much do you value your time? It's a very important question, and just like the chicken or the egg, there's no right or wrong answer. It just depends on where you are in your career and what your goals are. Take me for example. When I arrived in Australia nine years ago, coming from Canada, it didn't matter that I already had 10 years of experience by then, because I was starting from scratch in a new market where I didn't know anyone, didn't have any contacts, no network, and even my experience didn't mean much because it was all with companies that no one in Australia knew anything about. So I was very much so like a beginner just starting in sports videography, like many of you watching this video right now. So I was applying on jobs for a while with no luck whatsoever. And at that point, I could have sat at home thinking, I am not lifting a finger until I find a job worthy of my 10 years of experience because I know my worth and I won't accept anything less. But instead, I went the other way. I thought since no one wants to hire me, I might as well focus on freelancing by targeting the clubs who I know desperately need help with their videos because I've seen it on their website and their socials, and I was even willing to turn into a drug dealer and give them the first taste for free. And I wasn't gonna do just a basic edit job because I wasn't making any money on it. Every single client who accepted my free offer got some of my best work because I knew that those free videos were gonna be my calling card not only with them, but with every other team that was gonna see my videos. And about a year later, I was already running my own business dedicated to sports videography and working with some of the biggest teams in Australia. So my point is that at that time, my biggest asset was time. I didn't have any money, I didn't have any fancy equipment, all I had was time and lots of it. So I was willing to completely devalue my time and invest it into projects that I felt were going to eventually give my time more value than ever. And it worked. But let me tell you another story because a lot of people watching this video don't necessarily wanna do this full time. Some of you already have jobs, 
full-time jobs and they're happy to do this sports videography thing as a side hustle on the weekend. And in that case, you shouldn't devalue your time. A lot of people in that situation make the mistake of thinking that because they have a full-time job already, it's okay to make videos on the side during weekends for other people for little to no money. But trust me, if you're good at what you do and people enjoy your videos, because they're so cheap, they're gonna keep asking for more and more. And then you'll be in a situation where all your free time is spent working on other people's videos just for a few bucks. And once you start spending two, three, four, or five weekends in a row doing just that, that good old smell of regret is gonna creep back in. So in a side hustle scenario, because you don't have much time left after your family time, personal time, work time, whatever you got going on in your life, then you should definitely value your time and don't undersell it. Okay, so now that you have a better idea of how to value your time, let's see if we can translate that into actual money figures. So typically videographers tend to offer half day rates and full day rates. A good place to start would be to look at how much the professionals in your area are charging and basically decide where you wanna position yourself in comparison to them based on your level of experience. And like I said earlier, don't forget to also factor in your equipment. A good way to do that is to look at video equipment rental places in your area and see how much it would cost to rent your camera kit or a very similar one for a day. My advice would be to charge about 50% of what they do. That way, when you quote people, instead of giving them one big number that's gonna scare them off and make them think that all that money is going into your pockets, you can break it up by saying, I'm charging you that much for my time that much for my equipment, and that much for my expenses. That way, it's a lot easier for people to accept a big number because they understand what it's for. And if they decide to do their research and see if they can get a better price on equipment, they'll quickly find out that you're giving them a pretty good deal. And remember earlier when I said that it's okay when you're starting to keep your prices low, but the key is to know how and when to start charging more? Well, here's another trick for you. What I would do as a beginner is quote similar prices as the professionals in my area and add an extra 50 or 40 or 25% discount on top. That way, the client is obviously super happy about the discount and it also educates them about the true value of the video. So when the day comes that the discount either gets smaller or disappears altogether, if they're happy with your work, they'll most likely just be thankful that they got a discount for so long and just pay the full price. So to summarize everything so far, you need to decide how much your time is worth, find out how much your equipment is worth, add in all your expenses, break it all down into a quote to which you can apply a discount if necessary. One last tip before I let you go, it's also very good business to have different tiers of price rates for different types of clients. For example, if you work around high school football, you should have a rate for individuals who come to you directly, but you should have also a slightly higher rate for schools and a higher rate for businesses because they all have different budgets that they handle very differently. So if you take me, for example, have a rate for teams, a different rate for leagues and federations, and another rate for brands and businesses. And don't be afraid to start with a high number, by the way. Don't sell yourself short because you're scared that a potential client will say no. If they've seen your work and they're still talking to you, that means that they like what you do and they want to work with you. So if the price is too high for them, they're much more likely to try to talk you into a lower price than they are to just straight up move on to the next videographer. And when they start that negotiation, that's when you hit them up with that drug dealer mentality and drop a 15 or 20% discount for their first video. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you want to learn more about the ups and downs of my sports videography career, I suggest you watch this video about some of the biggest mistakes I've made throughout my journey. Otherwise, thank you again for watching. My name is E, and I hope I earned the privilege of your time.